things that the enemy has tried to delay, tried to abort, tried to consume, shall be manifest for you this year. They shall come forth into fruition and into manifestation this year. Things you have carried and have not been able to produce will come forth for you this year. Somebody needs to say amen. Internationally recognized for teaching and preaching the uncompromised Word of God, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations, being used by the power of the Holy Spirit, has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. Now, remember this, that uh, the Word of God declares that under the rule of King David, there was a group of men of the tribe of Issachar, the Bible says, who had understanding of the times and knew what Israel was to do. Their understanding of what time it was, was what informed their action and their activity. Are you listening to me? I said, are you listening to me? This is one of the old covenant foreshadowings of prophetic ministry in the body of Christ in the new covenant. That there are men and women that God has wired to have understanding of what time it is so that they can instruct and help God's people to cooperate with times and seasons. Are you listening to me? Now, one of the key elements of this, and I'm going to bring this to bear, one of the key elements of this is that God has a calendar. Did you hear what I just said? God has a calendar, and the calendar of God is different than the calendar we go by. Once again, it is the year of our Lord, 2019, as we move into this new year. But it is 5779 in the Hebrew calendar, which is the calendar that God goes by. Now you say, why is that? If I were to give you my calendar, in other words, if I were to give you my calendar for the next year, watch this, having my calendar would inform you of my movement. You didn't hear what I just said. I'm going to say it again. Having my calendar, having my, uh, my, my, my movement, having what I'm going to do or knowledge of that would inform you of my movement for the next year. So you've got to understand this. Uh, when Rosh Hashanah occurs every year in our calendar, the Gregorian calendar, the Western calendar, it always occurs around September or October because the Hebrew calendar and the Gregorian calendar are different. Ours is a solar calendar. The Hebrew calendar is both solar and lunar, which is why Hebrew festival dates move around our calendar. They're not on the same days because there's a different number of days in the Hebrew calendar as opposed to the Western Gregorian calendar. Wave at me if you understand what I'm saying. Now, and, and yet it, it's very interesting. If you study any of the Hebrew, Hebrew tradition, the Hebrew rabbis, the Hebrew sages, one of the reasons that Rosh Hashanah, which literally means the head of the year, which is the beginning of the Jewish calendar year, happens around September, is because the, rabbi, the, the rabbis and the Jewish sages say that literally is the time and the day 
that God created man in the earth. Are y'all still here? And so they gauge their calendar relative to that creation. So while it is the year 2019 in the Gregorian calendar, is the year 5779 in the Hebrew calendar or God's calendar and God's timetable. Now, in both of those, 2019 and 5779, the last digit is the number nine. We talked to you last year about 5778 and how God had spoken to us that it was going to be a year where the grace of God was going to, was going to bring about the entrance into finished things. Five is the number of grace. Seven is the number of completion or maturity. Seven is also the number of rest. And then last year, eight, the number of new beginnings. And we declared the year of the shift, and I can testify as well as you can that things shifted. Things were shifting all year long, radical shift, spiritual shift. Now that shifting is not going to cease, it's going to continue because it wasn't just a calendar year, it is a season. But now we are moving into another dimension of that. And 5779, 2019, the Lord said to me, he said, tell the people, this is going to be a year of birthing purpose things. I want you to write that down. Everybody say, birthing purposed things. Write that down. It's going to be a year for God's people of birthing purposed things, especially if you're connected in any way to this anointing. And if you're in this room or watching me live streaming right now, this is a word for you because I've been praying for you all week. That if this word was for you, you would not miss it. So touch your neighbor three times and tell him he's talking to you. Pay attention. The Lord said to me, it shall be a year of birthing purpose things. Everybody say purpose things. Say it again. And he gave me a subtitle or a sub, uh, a sub uh, uh, if you will, assertion. And I would write this down too if you're taking notes. He said, tell my people that this will be a year of Holy Spirit dominion. You see, if you and I are going to birth things that God has purposed, we are going to have to allow the person of the Holy Spirit to take his place of dominion and ascendancy in our lives, in our purposes, in our situations. Now grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it real tight, and tell your neighbor, say, things that the enemy has tried to delay, tried to abort, tried to consume shall be manifest for you this year. They shall come forth into fruition and into manifestation this year. Things you have carried and have not been able to produce will come forth for you this year. Somebody needs to say amen. Glory, I got to hurry with this. Look real great, and it's very interesting. Oh, children, listen to me. Hear what I'm about to say. If, the, if, you, if you know anything about Hebrew lettering and Hebrew numbers, Hebrew letters and numbers are interchangeable. In other words, the, in the Hebrew uh, alphabet or alphabet, they call it the alphabet. In the Hebrew alphabet, uh, the, 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 the ninth, the, the ninth uh, letter is the symbol or is the equivalent of the number nine. Are you, are you there? Oh, yeah. So, so the number nine in Hebrew is the ninth letter of their alphabet. Are y'all here? Or alphabet. Now, it is the number Tate. It's spelled T-E-T, -E but it's pronounced Tate. And it is a pictograph. In other words, it's pictures like hieroglyphic. The number literally, it looks like, you don't have to take my word for it, look it up. Uh, it, the, it literally looks like, it looks like a snake coiled in a basket, but then it also looks like, and this is not my vantage point, this is the Hebrew and the rabbis, it also looks like a pregnant woman. Are you there? The pictograph, the letter itself, it looks like a coiled snake, but it also looks like a woman who is bringing forth or bearing. And when I read that and I was studying this, the Holy Spirit reminded me of Revelation chapter number 
uh, chapter number tw uh, 12, I think it is. Uh, yeah, Revelation 12, verses 3 through 5. Go there real quickly. I got to read, I gotta, I gotta read this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to read this in just a moment, but I need to do this first because I need you to see this. It says, and another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and, the seven, and seven diadems on his head. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, again, this is the book of Revelation. The, the, the dragon is, is a manifestation of the serpent. The Bible says his tail to a third of the stars of heaven. This is speaking of Lucifer who fell and with his fall took a third of the angels from heaven according to Revelation 12. Are you still here? So there is this, there is this, this opposition, this juxtaposition between the dragon and the woman who is ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born, she brought a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Who's that talking about? Jesus and his body, the church. So watch this. You have in nine, you have this serpent, but you also have this pregnant woman. In other words, someone is purposed to bring forth, but there is an adversarial spirit that's attempting to devour what the male, what, what the woman brings forth. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight. Say, if you haven't figured it out yet, you're the pregnant one. You in the body of Christ, you're the one who is to produce, but there is a spirit that has been attempting to consume what you manifest as soon as it comes out. And I have come to announce to you in the name of Jesus that that devil will be ejected from your atmosphere if you will allow the Holy Spirit to dominate the operation. You've got to understand this with every child that God produces, with every born again son and daughter of God, God births you into a play that's already going on. Your part has already been written. Nobody can play it but you. God wants to work miracles in your money. It is and always has been the Lord's desire to see His people blessed financially without any fear of lack in their lives. We are living as slaves to a system that we have been delivered from when the blood of Jesus, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth has freely given His children all things. In this series by Bishop Clarence e. McClendon, you'll find out how to establish a perpetual flow of increase in your family for generations to come. Included in this month's product offer is the book, Beyond Personal Power, in which Bishop McClendon reveals the universal law and power of faith and how to apply the God kind of faith to every challenge in your life. Log on to bishopmcclendon.com to place your order today. Now watch what I'm getting ready to say. Go to Genesis 25. I got to read this to you. Genesis 25. And if you've been hanging around me, uh, you've heard some of this because it always happens around September, October. God starts speaking to me and it starts eking out. Look at Genesis 25, verse 19. This is the genealogy of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah as his wife, the daughter of Bethel, the Syrian, of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Everybody says she conceived. But watch this. But the children struggled within her, and she said, if all is well with me, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord. Now get it. She is pregnant with something that God has purposed. What she is pregnant with has actually been prayed for. And yet, 
it is causing her discomfort. When she goes to inquire of the Lord, the Lord says, there are two nations or two natures are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. We dealt with this prophetically some time ago that there is a higher and a lower nature. There is an old man and a new man in every Christian. And whenever you're trying to birth a purpose thing, your old man will try to keep your new man, the redeemed man, the new creation from bringing forth. The two have to be separated. And the thing that separates them is the word of God. But notice the prophetic declaration is that the older shall serve the younger. See, your old man is to serve your new man. Are you still here? Now, we'll get to this in just a moment. Your old man, the old nature, is not to have dominion over the spirit nature the indwelt by the Holy Ghost in you. Are you still here? Look at your neighbor and say, the older will serve the younger. Oh, I wish I had time to develop that, but I don't have time to do it tonight. I preached on it. Nudge your neighbor and say, get the tape. Or, or go online and watch it. Look at Luke chapter 1, quick. Look at Luke chapter 1, verse number 30. Luke chapter 1, verse number 30, quick. I, I want to show you something here that is interesting and similar. Luke chapter 1, verse 30. Then the angel said to her, now we're talking about the angel Gabriel speaking to Mary concerning the birth of Jesus. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Tell him you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the son of the highest. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Look at verse 34. Everybody read verse 34 out loud with me. Ready, read. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Notice the Holy Spirit's got to get involved in this. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that holy one, the King James says that holy one, the new King James says that holy thing, that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God, or in the literal language, shall have the nature and character of God in it. You see, Son in the Hebrew, and remember, uh, Jesus, the new covenant is written in Greek, but they didn't speak Greek, they spoke Aramaic. Uh, 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 Aramaic, which is the derivative of Hebrew. And so in Hebrew, the word son does not have anything to do with gender. In Hebrew, the word son has nothing to do with male or female. The word son means one with the nature and character of. So the son of a thing is that which carries the nature and character of it. When Jesus said he was the son of God, he was saying, I have God's nature and character. That's why they couldn't stand him because when you say you have nature and character, you are making yourself equal to that which produced you. Nudge your neighbor and say, did you get that? So, 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 oh, you need to understand this because that's why the Bible says, behold, what favor God has shown us that we should be called sons. They translated it children, but it really means son. In other words, he said, when you understand what God means when he calls you son, it'll change your disposition. Because when God calls you son, he's saying you have my nature, my character, and I have made you equal. No, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. You don't understand. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. And say, I hope you got that. I, I, I got I to move on with this. Now, now, now pay attention. He says, the Holy Spirit will come on you. How is this thing going to happen? The power of the highest will overshadow you. Now watch this. In both of these cases, in both cases, in Rebecca's case and in Mary's case, we are dealing with the birthing of purpose things. Now write this down. The word purpose, the Greek word for purpose is the word prothesis. It literally means, watch this, that which has been established or determined beforehand. I'm going to say it again. It, it, it means that which has been established or determined beforehand. So a purpose thing, Pastor Lance, is a thing that has been established for you 
or determined for you by God before you did anything, good or evil, before you knew God or blew him off. Y'all aren't listening to me. This thing was purposed. It was determined that you would walk in. And you've got to understand this with every child that God produces, with every born again son and daughter of God, God births you into a play that's already going on. Your part has already been written. Nobody can play it but you. And what you're going to do has already been determined by God. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight. This is why, tell your neighbor, say, this is why. If you don't quit, you can't fail. Because what you're supposed to do has already been mapped out. And the Holy Spirit's responsibility is to move you into it. This is why the Bible says that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that he established beforehand. This is why the Bible says all things work together for the good to them that are called of God and to them that are called according to what he determined before. Grab your neighbor's hand. Tell them there were some things that God determined for you before you got saved. And look at your neighbor and say, and if you're not saved, there are some things that God has determined for you that he's going to bring you into in this season. It is a very interesting thing. It is a very interesting thing. I don't have time to go into this the way I want to, but you preachers can, can study this out. The Greek word prothesis, which is translated purpose, is the same Greek word that is translated showbread into English. It's the same word. The word showbread in the New Covenant is the word prothesis. The word purpose in the New Covenant is the word prothesis. Now, if you know anything about showbread, you know that showbread was bread that only priests could eat. It was priest food. Which means once you become born again and you become a part of this royal priesthood, you are now empowered to consume purpose. Which is why if you want to see God's destiny fulfilled in your life, you got to come to him through Jesus. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight. Say purpose is priest food. Tell your neighbor, you will never fulfill your purpose until you become a part of this royal priesthood. And I don't care how blessed you get, how rich you look, how awesome you are to other people, if you have not come to Jesus, you'll never fulfill it. Now let me, let me, let me, let me get this and let me get it clearly. In both cases, in both cases, and i got to hurry with this, in both cases, in Rebecca's case with uh, with uh, Jacob and in Mary's case with Jesus you have women who have conceived and are bringing forth purpose things grab your neighbor's hand squeeze it tight say stay with the boy he's got to move quickly now in Rebecca's case she will bring to birth Jacob and Esau Jacob is the one whose name will be changed to Israel. So this will be the child who gives the name to the entire nation of the people of God. So grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight, and tell your neighbor there's a nation in him. You, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you, you don't get it. See, what you don't understand is what God has placed in you, there's a nation in it. There's the redemption of an entire community in it. You think it's just you. You think this thing that God has talked to you about is just for you. No, 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 no. There's a whole community connected. There's a lineage connected to it. 
Y'all aren't hearing me. Y'all aren't hearing me. Grab your neighbor's hand. Tell them this is why today is so important. I was in Kenya, and I was meditating, talking with one of my intercessors, and the Lord dropped this on me, and, and, and he was talking to me about how a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day with the Lord. And I said, God, help me to understand this. He said, what you don't understand is I can, I, I can settle a thousand years of destiny in a day. Y'all aren't hearing me. If I get a hold of the right man of God or the right woman, if I can bring out of someone what I've got in them, I can change the course of a whole nation, of a whole family, of a whole continent for a thousand years in a day. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight, say, baby, what you don't understand is what God has put in you is to affect something for a thousand years. Something supposed to be changed for generations because what God has put in you is birth. Say with me, I'm almost done with this. Not really, but I'll have to quit soon. In Jesus' case, in Mary's case, she is birthing Jesus. There will be no redemption, no new creation, no new covenant. If this purpose thing isn't birthed, are you listening to me? Lay your hand on yourself and say what you're carrying is important. No, no, no. I need you to lay your hands on you and say what you're carrying is important. Nations depend on it. Families depend on it. An entire community, it depends on it. An entire school system may depend on it. Lives will live or die because of what has been placed in you. God wants to work miracles in your money. It is and always has been the Lord's desire to see His people blessed financially without any fear of lack in their lives. We are living as slaves to a system that we have been delivered from. When the blood of Jesus, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth has freely given his children all things. In this series by Bishop Clarence E. McClendon, you'll find out how to establish a perpetual flow of increase in your family for generations to come. Included in this month's product offer is the book, Beyond Personal Power, in which Bishop McClendon reveals the universal law and power of faith and how to apply the God kind of faith to every challenge in your life. Log on to bishopmcclendon.com to place your order today. Whenever you are manifesting a divinely purposed thing, there will be questions that will arise from your nature. I, I don't understand if this is of God. Why am I struggling with it? If it's of God, why is it taking so long? If God has planned it, why doesn't he just help me do it? Why doesn't he just bring me the folk that are supposed to do it? If it's a divine thing, what up? 